This, ladies and gentlemen, is the test tube port of this new Apple I just bought. And yeah, looks nice and colorful, but what does it actually mean? In this video, I will talk about the test tube port, uh, the measurements uh, which were performed. And I will also talk about um, the optical capabilities. And yeah, I will also talk about uh, what this test report has in common with a picture of a black hole so don't miss it as you can see it's sunny and finally we will have a clear night most probably so i can finally make some pictures using this uh, new apple i just bought and i cannot wait to show you some images this is the test report i just got uh, together with the new instrument If you missed it, here you can see the unboxing video and I also talked about the uh, capabilities of, those, uh, of this instrument. And yeah, it's very nice. So I thought, yeah, it's nice to see, it's colorful and so on. But since we had some uh, rainy days, let's say, and storm and so on, uh, I was very interested uh, not just to have it, but actually to understand it. So I did some research, uh, I did some research myself and I also asked some people who are familiar with this uh, topic and I also talked with a physicist uh, who has uh, long term experience with this and yeah, I will talk about this later. I will not go into optical or mathematical uh, details here, just to give you a rough overview and to talk about the background, what was measured and what can you apply from this. But before I will talk about each and every um, graph you can see here, I shortly want to talk about uh, the method which was used to produce those data. The method which was used here is called interferometry. And so you have a light source, you have a detector, you have a half uh, permeable or half transparent uh, mirror, and you also have an additional mirror, a full reflecting mirror, and you have a test object. So let's say you have a lens from this telescope. Okay, so first uh, the light from the light source hitting the semi-permeable uh, mirror, and then half of the light is reflected to the mirror, and half of the light goes through the mirror and hits the lens, for example. If you have a perfect mirror and a perfect lens, those laser beams or light beams, for example, uh, should hit the detector at the same time. And here it gets interesting. If both uh, light beams hit the detector at the same time, uh, you will see interference. That's why it's called interferometry. That means uh, you have an increase in signal. If you have a, only a slight shift, uh, of those two laser, laser beams or light beams uh, entering the detector, you will have a decrease in the signal. And in principle, this method was also used in order to generate this picture of a black hole or the surroundings of a black hole using uh, a network of many different uh, radio telescopes. And this is called Event Horizon Telescope. But since we are dealing with a man-made optical instrument, for example, a lens of this telescope, um, both uh, light beams coming from the first mirror versus the um, second mirror or the lens, for example, will not hit the detector at the same time. So you will have a difference in time. And if you measure the yeah, whole uh, lens of this telescope, for example, you will get um, different values um, depending on the position of, of, the, of the light um, and the position of the lens, let's say. So you will get different values from different uh, locations of the lens and using those uh, values you can also produce a three-dimensional uh, picture or graph. And this is exactly what you can see here in, the, in this picture. 
So what you can see on the right hand side uh, is a three dimensional uh, illustration of those values I just uh, explained. And on the left hand side, you can see the yeah, same values, but not in a three dimensional, but in a two dimensional um, illustration. So those values describe what is called a wave front deformation in optics. This is not something strange, so it's very common to have wavefront deformation since you cannot make a perfect lens or mirror or optical instrument. You can also see the PV and the RMS values here. So if you would have a perfect mirror or perfect lens, you would have a flat plane and those values would be zero. So when we are talking about uh, wavefront uh, deformations, uh, the perfect mirror or perfect lens would have a, yeah, a value of equal to zero. And this means you have a perfectly flat uh, plane. So the smaller the values here, the better. When we speak about wavefront deformations um, in optics using the telescope and the lens and so on, there are two main uh, causes for this wavefront deformation. One reason is uh, you don't have the lens itself, the pure lens, but you have kind of layers to improve the optical properties of this lens. So this can lead a wavefront to a wavefront deformation. And the second thing is the, um, yeah, let's say unevenness of, of, the, uh, of the lens, let's say. So you will not have, yeah, kind of this shape, but you will have kind of bumps or something, how you call it. Um, yeah, so it looks uh, quite grainy. Further, when you look on the right hand side, uh, you will see a table with different uh, numbers. And those numbers are so-called seidel uh, coefficients. And I will not go into the background and the details here because it's heavy mathematical stuff. Um, but what I know and also know from a discussion with a physicist is that those values should also be uh, as small as they can get. So now let's talk about the picture on the bottom left of the test report. Here you can see a picture and under the picture you can see a so-called Strehl uh, number and you also can see a PSF size uh, number. And PSF stands for point spread function and the Strehl number should be close to one. And the Strehl number or PSF uh, size number or the whole illustration uh, shows how a dot is depicted using this uh, optical, optical instrument. So here on the left hand side picture of this graph, uh, yeah, really a point or a spherical structure would be excellent. And on the right hand side, you can see a three dimensional illustration of those uh, data. Of course, uh, one value is dependent on the other. And if you have a yeah, uneven lens, for example, which is normal, uh, you will have different effects, for example. So now you can combine the pictures uh, with regard to the wavefront deformation and you can yeah, kind of combine it or compare it to the um, Strehl or PST uh, plot here. Let's imagine you don't have a perfect lens. And so again, you will have a light hitting the lens, the non-perfect lens. And so you have unevenness and so on. So uh, optic uh, aberrations. Um, you will also have, in the end, you will also have a, um, a dot, but this dot will be uh, bigger. So this is exactly what you can see here. So if those values would be perfect, so without any de wavefront deformation, you would have a, yeah, a point, uh, like a pinpoint, pinpoint sharp, right? But since the lens is not perfect, um, you, ha you will have a, uh, a shift to, uh, yeah, let's say a, a big, bigger point, let's say. So now let's speak about the last picture, uh, which you can see here. Again, this picture is quite easy to understand. If you would have a perfect lens, uh, you would see straight lines here. But since this optical instrument 
as any optical instrument man-made uh, it's not perfect uh, you cannot see really see straight lines but some imperfections here so i hope uh, this helped you to understand uh, your certificate or test report and for me it was very interesting to yeah know some details and a little bit of background as i said before i also talked with a physicist uh, who is working um, for the company which produced those uh, test reports or let's say uh, they sell or produce the instrument in order to measure uh, those uh, optical properties of this telescope for example or other uh, instruments and i also asked what is your opinion on this test report do you think it's good or very good or even excellent and he said the values you can see in this test report are very very good for this kind of telescope so i'm very happy with this information as you can imagine yeah i hope this was helpful for you uh, to get an idea about those um, test reports and a little bit of background and so on and if you have any further questions please write me a comment or please give me a like and yeah uh, thank you for watching and see you next time. Clear skies.